Good day YouTube, 1MJ here and welcome back. Alright, Tuesday afternoon here in Australia, market has gone down ever so slightly, so minus 1.2%, so we're back under 2.3 trillion. And again, the markets, uh, I mean I'm going to get to some charts at the moment, there's something I'm seeing at the, at the moment in the total market cap chart that just makes me think that we've got a move coming i just i don't know whether it's going to be to the upside or the downside that's the sad part i'd love to be able to tell you look this is the way it's going but you know as i've said before number one i'm never offering you financial advice i am not in any way shape or form a financial or investment advisor i'm just someone who's been in the space for a while and i can give you my opinions and that's all they are is just simply opinions but let's move on all right so again down 1.2 percent but again we're still just we're not below uh 2.2 trillion which is you know good <laughs> but we're not above 2.5 trillion or the kind of three trillion dollar mark which is where we want to get so not so good in those uh, aspects and again we'll get to the total market cap chart very shortly there's something i'm seeing that's interesting All right bitcoin dominance uh fallen ever so slightly so we're under 39 percent now so that 38 percent level so our altcoins getting ready to you know make a big move that's you know something that'll be interesting there is some volume though so people are buying these dips even though it goes down it gets bought but again the problem is it just doesn't go up by enough it we're still stepping down ever so sort of slightly so that's something that we need to keep an eye out for and bitcoin price again under forty seven thousand. now it's down to forty six thousand three hundred. i did see it down at forty six thousand one hundred. so that is quite low uh and you know we're just waiting to see can we hold that forty six thousand dollar level i think if we break down into the forty five thousand dollar level other than just a little bit of a spike on like the minute or the hourly chart or something like that if we do sort of you know four hourly and definitely daily i think we're dropping down to forty two thousand very quickly if that happens but again that's just my opinion all right what has done well in the last 24 hours considering the market's down all right so near protocol nice move there nearly 20 percent raven coin uh nearly 19 percent phantom nearly sort of 18 percent Adam, there we go, making a move. 13% quite nice. Curve Dow, I was going to buy some the other day and I didn't. But anyway, I mean, that's just the way it is. What can you do? You can't win them all. We'll have to wait and see if they'll last as well. Uh, Link starting to make some moves. So finally making its way back up after doing extremely well early on in this sort of bull run and then just really tapering off. But again, Link kind of falls into that DeFi narrative and a lot of the DeFi coins are starting to make moves. So we'll have to wait and see how that all pans out. So look, some nice double digit gains and then some nice sort of high single digit moves as well. But we've got to remember the overall market is down though. So there we go. Safe Moon down 6%. Spell Token, Yearn Finance, Engine, Cadena, Helium, Luna, Avalanche, Aave, Gala. I mean, you name it. Look, there's some coins that are down, but nothing too kind of bad really is uh, the way I would kind of say it. And again, look, that's the market. Not everything goes up. But now I want to get onto the total market cap chart. This is something interesting that I'm seeing. So we've been kind of playing around to this, you know, kind of, again, $1.8 trillion mark. And look, we've gone as high as, like I said, basically $3 trillion. But really, this is where we've been ranging. But look what's happening in this kind of box that we have here. We hit the top, we hit the bottom, we had a breakout, but it was a fake out. And now we've come back down and we hit a low. But now it looks like it's just coming to this kind of point. We can see that uh, it rain it runs from here. It's bounced off here. We've had a couple of bounces here. Now, what we can also do with this line, though, is this line can be moved. I just took where we've got a couple of hits. So we had a bounce off here, but this absolutely can then more go to something like that. But I just get the feeling like this looks a little bit better because you can see it touches there and then it's touching here. I get the feeling like it's getting ready to make a move. Now, I'm hoping it's to the upside, but in all fairness, it could be to the downside because sometimes you can get up high in these and then you got to come down low. So this might have to extend out and this might kind of, you know, get up to around about here and then again, come down to the 1.8, 1. 1 point, you know, or $2 trillion sort of flat mark. That is what I'm looking at at the moment. I'm, you know, I'm unsure whether it's bullish or it's bearish in all fairness. But as I said, you know, I, I'm putting away a minimum 20% of my DCA at the moment into cash and just leaving it in cash. 
because if there is a dip, I want to be able to buy it. I took some profits a little while ago and rebalanced my portfolio. That was the word I was looking for the other day. I can't believe I couldn't remember it. But rebalanced my portfolio, so I got a minimum of 10% cash. And I want to try and always keep it at 10%. In all fairness, I want to keep it from 10 to 20% cash at different times, but a minimum of 10% sort of all the time. So if there are big dips, then I'm going to be able to buy it. Because if I don't have that spare cash sitting on the side, then I can't take advantage of that. And when there are dips, I'm not going to buy them sort of so aggressively unless they really are good dips don't get me wrong i will buy them but you know if it dips you know like sort of you know particularly bitcoin if it dips you know sort of 15 20 percent i'm not going to go too hard at it i'm really going to be looking more for those kind of 50 ish percent you know definitely 30 to 50 percent gains i'm going to put more into bitcoin uh, and again that'll be taken from profits from other coins to put into bitcoin because that's my kind of reserve but even then i want to just try and maintain that I always have 10% cash, like bare minimum 10% cash at all times. And that's how I'm going to, again, you know, and of that sort of cash, a majority of that cash will be in stable coins, but I would say probably at least a third of it will be in sort of physical cash as well, just sitting on the exchanges, you know, getting ready to buy if there are any big dips. But this is what I'm looking at. So again, I'm just, I'm, I'm unsure whether this is going to be bullish or bearish. There's no real news that makes me think it should be either way at the moment. So look, this does look like a bit of a kind of, you know, a bit of a, not so much a pennant, but definitely a kind of uh, a bull flag, like you'd be hoping it to break out and break upwards. But again, there's no guarantees in life. This absolutely could sort of push up and then roll back down. And we could be in for months of sideways movement. Like I said, I don't really, I just, I, my gut feeling says we're probably not going to see too much until sort of February-ish. Again, the Bitcoin, the spot Bitcoin ETF approvals, uh, there's a couple that will push back and they're going to be, I don't know if they are going to be decided on. I think they can be pushed back again, possibly another 45 days. But I know sort of around February, there could be a, decision on that and I think one of them is grayscale and that you think would be the most likely one to get through because it holds so much bitcoin and I think it's got about half a million bitcoin or something like that and that could be the catalyst to really push things up but also there could be some bad catalysts that push things down so yeah we're in kind of no man's land is this going to bust up is it going to bust down or we're we just going to kind of travel sideways uh, for you know a number of more months and look, in all fairness, if it continues to go sideways, I don't have any problems with that because that is just accumulation for me. I've shown many charts before, particularly, oh God, Matic, that's the one. Polygon is what I was trying to think of. It's a good project and it was just going sideways for so long. It wasn't dumping, it just wasn't going up either. And that's accumulation. That's usually, you know, big players, you know, trying to accumulate as much as they can. So they're buying, you know, say 10 and then they're selling three or something like that to try and keep the price down and it's not as simple as that but that's kind of what's going on they're accumulating without kind of pushing the price up and a lot of it is done otc as well but also there's not a whole lot of otc stuff for some coins because it's all out there on the market so that's just something to keep in mind is this is looks like a big accumulation we had the fake out it came back down and now we're traveling sideways and it just feels like it's building up and it's going to get ready to pop now, don't get me wrong, it could be to the downside though. We'll have to wait and see. Right, Bitcoin, let's have a look. And the reason I think it's still possible to the downside is here we are with Bitcoin. And again, I showed this chart and I said, look, we got the breakout. It'd be all right if we kind of bounced off this and stayed on the outside and then broke up. We're in kind of decision mode right now. It is bouncing on the outside of this. We had the fake out, fell under, used it as resistance. It broke out again and now it's sitting on it. But look, at $46,481, it's looking shaky. You know, it's early in the day, so we're really going to have to wait and see what happens. If, you know, this can travel sideways and we can, you know, go sideways through to February and all the rest of it. But I am somewhat concerned at the moment that there's just not enough steam in it that we might fall down and start to revisit these $42,000 levels. But like I said, I've got cash on the side. If that happens, I do have buy orders in just above kind of 42,000, sort of 500. Uh, I've got a buy order, buy order in. And if it doesn't get down there, then that's fine. I've got the cash sitting on the side. And if it gets to 42,000 and goes even lower, again, I'm not throwing the kitchen sink at it. I am just, I'm putting in buy orders. 
uh, for Bitcoin if it continues to go down and Ethereum, don't get me wrong, and I will look at altcoins. Now I do have to say, I did make a reasonable size kind of play in an altcoin the other day, just because it's something I'm interested in, and so that was a mutable X. Uh, it had a big pump after it came out, and it's kind of, cons- you know, come right down and in a bit of a consolidation phase. So it did put what well, you know, nothing major. We're not talking like you know hundreds of thousands or tens of thousands of dollars or anything like that. But I would say it's probably about, oh, I think that'd be about a two to three uh, percent acquisition of my entire entire portfolio has been put into a mutable X. Uh, NFT space, I really like what they're doing, gas, you know, gas free, gasless and all the rest of it. So I did make a play and we'll have to wait and see how that uh, pans out. But like I said, I'm not really focusing on altcoins too much. So I don't want anyone to think that I'm, you know, putting massive money into altcoins at the moment. I'm not. I just made a play on a mutable X because I really like what they're about and I want a bigger position in the metaverse and the sort of NFT gaming space. So I'm willing to, you know, maybe not buy at the best price, but at least have exposure to it. And if it doesn't pan out uh, and I lose the money, then so be it. I'm sure other projects will make up for it. Like I did say that I got some synthetic uh, network the other day uh, and it's up, oh God, I don't know, 14, 15%, maybe 20% in the last sort of 24 hours or 48 hours or so. So, you know, some things pan out and some don't. And don't get me wrong, Synthetics Network could fully turn around in the next hour or in the next day or two and lose all of those. So, yeah, number one, I'm never offering you financial advice. <clears throat> and number two, I'm not making any huge plays. Again, you know, one to 2% play, for an altcoin, that is what I consider big. Outside of Bitcoin and Ethereum, I really don't like to have positions too much bigger than that in altcoins unless I'm really solid on them. And that would be things like uh, Matic, I've got a bigger position than that, and Cardano, I've got a bigger position than that. But outside of that, a lot of the positions I have in my other altcoins, they really are small, anywhere from half a percent to maybe one to two percent. And that is the maximum that I let them make up until I become really sold on them. Because again, I've been in this space for a while. I've seen coins that were super hot and everyone thought they were going you know, to the moon and we're going to be around forever in 2017. And now they're done and dusted and they're just, you know, you hardly even hear about them anymore. Again, NEO. And NEO is not dead, but it just hasn't fared that well this time. Litecoin has not really done too well. Oh God, what's not EOS again? Everyone was talking about EOS. It was going to be the next big thing, and it's gone. So that's why I'm very careful about how much I will allocate to any altcoins, unless I really am sold on them. I think Ethereum, you know, 2.0. We're still waiting on that. I'm I'm pretty much sold on Ethereum, but just not 100. percent And that means layer twos on Ethereum, and particularly Polygon Matic. I really like that. But again. It's got such a big position because I put a very small position in originally and it's just done so well. I'm not going too crazy allocating too much more to Polygon at the moment. And again, it's not because I don't like it. It's because I'm unsure of where the market is and I don't want to be focusing on altcoins just yet until I've got a better indication. But I am putting a few dollars into altcoins. All right, moving on. A couple of stories I want to focus on. Turkey's inflation jumps to 36% and the lira's value plummets as citizens flock to stablecoins. Now, I'm pretty sure Turkey made it quite hard for their uh, citizens to be able to invest in cryptocurrencies because they're all fleeing from uh, the lira and things like that. But now they're going to stablecoins uh, and the you know, stable coins are basically based on the US dollar. And we know how well the US dollar uh, is doing at the moment with inflation and that, but compared to uh, the lira dropping 36% down on the US dollar, that's got to tell you something. So here, since this time last year, the lira has lost 44% of its value against the US dollar. Like we know the US dollar is going down. The US dollar is no safe haven at least not long term, short term it can be at times. And you know, if you can get some good yield from it, then that's great. But again, people are saying it's, you know, depreciating a minimum 6% because that's what the US, oh, excuse me, government has come out and said that inflation's at 6%. So that means the 
uh, dollar values uh, going down by 6% because it's not meeting that CPI and all the rest of it. But other smarter people are saying that it's more like 15 plus percent. So I don't know what the exact number is, but if you got the US dollar going down by that much and then you're in Turkey and the lira is down 44% on the US dollar, it's got to tell you that there's no safe haven in fiat money long term again short term there could be periods that may even last kind of a year or two or three or four where the dollar kind of goes up in value but unfortunately eventually they will just simply well they're, they're never going to fully stop printing at least not for any length of time i don't think they will ever fully stop printing they will just what they call taper and that means slow down so remember that they are always printing more dollars you know if a time comes where they stop printing more dollars then maybe we see you know the dollar really go up in value sort of long term but that's not how the fiat system works so just keep that in mind and very interesting that again turkey made it hard for them to invest in cryptocurrencies so they're all flocking to stable coins which is the us dollar and i wonder if they're able to use things you know such as celsius and Aave and compound and block and all that kind of stuff i wonder if the turkish government has stopped them from doing that as well but this is worrying for their dollar Right, Grayscale rebalances their DeFi fund, dropping Balancer and Uma. All right, and what's interesting is that they've gone with AMP, so they've rebalanced it and gone with AMP, the native uh, collateral token of the Flexa payment network. So again, there's lots of DeFi pr uh, platforms and programs out there. You know, I remember when the DeFi boom came and everyone wanted to chase everything. And look, you can get some great gains, but you just got to be careful where you kind of leave your money because there's been so many DeFi hacks and things like that. And considering uh, I'm speaking about that, another year, another hack. This time, Algorand's DeFi platform, Tiny Man, exploited for $3 million. Now, $3 million is not that much in the grand scheme of things. But it's still $3 million. Someone's got to cough that up. Now, the platform has come out and said that they'll fix everyone up. So that's great. But keep this in mind. This is a last year was a year of heightened theft that saw over $10 billion being lost to DeFi scams. As much as I love DeFi, I really do. I think it's the future. It's the revolution and things like that. So much of it is scammy and rug pulls and just, you know, bad code that hasn't really been audited and things like that. Hence why, yeah, please do your own research. Don't just rush out and, I mean, I'm not offering you financial advice, so you got to do what you you got to do. But I don't just rush out and buy the newest, hottest DeFi thing. I've been very selective in the DeFi platforms that I've got involved in. Uh, I, I, will, I still sort of am in Carver. I've got a little bit in there. It's kind of held all right. Uh, and they're coming out with, I think, their mainnet launch is coming out soon. So I have a very small position in Carver. But it's really been my DeFi play predominantly has been Aave uh, and Synthetics Network uh, as well. Now, Synthetics Network hasn't done that well, but there was an interesting tweet from Kane the other day saying that he believes all the VCs have finally kind of sold out of SNX. Now, people will think, oh, that's bad. They don't want to stay in. They're out. No, it's just because VCs have found better places to put their money. But what that also means is the selling pressure is probably hopefully done. And now, if Synthetics Network is to last, then it should be completely run by the community. It won't have you know massive VC issues and things like that. So there's upsides and downsides to that. I still like Synthetics. I think it's a great uh, platform. Like most DeFi projects, it's been hit really hard because even Aave got hit hard, Compound got hit hard, you name it. They've been pretty much brutalized since that DeFi summer last year. But it does look like they're slowly starting to gain a bit of traction. Things like Uniswap and SushiSwap. Uh, and, you know, like I said, even Synthetics is at about, I think, 14, 19% move in kind of the last 24 hours. But we've got to wait and see whether that's going to hold. And I am still waiting to see if my thesis is going to be true. That when the market is quiet and there's not much going on, you're going to see DeFi start to pump because everyone's trying to find yield now because the platforms, the projects they're in are no longer growing. And then when DeFi starts to slow down again, it'll be because everyone's getting out of DeFi. They've taken their, you know, their yields and their gains from DeFi and they're going to start to invest back into projects and I wonder if that will be sort of how the part of the cycle will work that again DeFi if it's doing well is an indication that the market has quietened down all right let's move on a couple other things I wanted to focus on 
Cardano, it's been hit really hard. I mean, it was up sort of near $3. It's down a dollar something now. But Cardano became the most developed crypto project on GitHub in 2021. Now, that says something. It's not the be-all and end-all to it, but the most developed cryptos on GitHub in 2021 was Cardano, Kasama, and Polkadot, then followed by Ethereum. So that's got to tell you something. Look where Solana is down there. So, you know, take that, take from that what you will, but I just get the feeling like, again, Cardano, because it's so far down, it's when things are down and boring and no one's touching it and no one's interested in it. And again, not no one, because that means the project's dead. But just get it when it's quiet and it's not really getting a lot of hype, that's when you want to be picking up the good projects. And that's if you believe Cardano is a good project. If you don't, don't touch it, don't put your money into it. There's no point. But if you like Cardano and it's down basically 50% you know, possibly plus from its old all-time high and you don't think we're in a bear market and going much lower, then maybe it could be a good buy at the moment. Again, I'm never off your financial advice. I can just tell you what I'm seeing. And there's, it looks like people are wanting to build on Cardano and you check the chart, it is really down. But what I took from this is Kasama and Polkadot. I've held onto my Polkadot. Uh, I bought, uh, you know, not a big bag, but I bought a bag at I think about four dollars or something, uh, and I've been you know questioning whether I should hold it or not and sell it and all the rest of it. And it's when I see things like this because I always thought it was a good project. Gavin Woods, really really smart guy, you know, basically one of the creators of Ethereum and the multi chains and the para chains and all that kind of thing that's going on with Polkadot. I was just like, oh, I'm just gonna hold this. Because I didn't put that much into it that if it if I lost it all it'd you know basically burn me. But if I just hold on to it for long enough and it does what I think it could do, it could do really well. And it's things like this that makes me think, yeah, I'm just going to hold my polka dot, and I might even consider buying just a little bit more. But I've got to check the charts. I'm not sure quite where polka dot is right now. I know when I checked it the other day, uh, it looked good. I think against Ethereum, but not so good against Bitcoin and it looked like I'm pretty sure again I'm trying to remember I'm pretty sure that on the dollar value it looked like it had been in a really big accumulation phase so I'll have to go back and have a check but Cardano doing quite well don't go to sleep on it uh, and Polkadot uh, above Ethereum and Solana uh, two yeah two under Ethereum so yeah keep that in mind look synthetics was their leaders among the DeFi projects again don't take my word just because I like it. You go out and do your own, <laughs> you know, make your own mind up and get your information from a vast array of sources. Don't yeah, follow anyone blindly and definitely don't follow me uh, blindly. Uh, I am just a guy telling you what I'm doing in crypto and I figure I want to tell people because I like talking about it and I've been in the space uh, and you might be able to learn something. But that is all. Just <laughs> you might be able to learn something. All right, last but not least... Ethereum betting site Polymarket has been hit with a $1.4 million fine from the CFTC and the crypto-based prediction market allegedly wasn't registered to offer binary options. So again, the regulatory issues around DeFi and you know just crypto in general, they're not over just yet. We still have a long ways to go. I honestly think we're probably still going to be trying to work this out probably all through 2022 maybe even going into 23 pushing out to 2025 it is you know, i'm not saying some countries won't get it all suited sorted sooner but i really think the usa will be a bit of a, la a, a lagger in that respect you know they the the you know the monetary powerhouse of the world really you know the us dollar is the base currency of the world they're going to really want to make sure that they understand it and regulate it properly that sort of leaves them still in charge but I do fear that if they leave it too long and too late that they just automatically lose uh, that kind of power that they have so it'll be interesting to see but yeah I think I think we're going to see more things like this uh, and particularly in sort of DeFi kind of places and things like that hence why you know like I really like synthetics but you know they've got some stuff so where you can you know long and short and all the rest of it and yeah, we'll just have to wait and see what happens in this whole DeFi space. There's definitely going to be some winners in there. I think Aave's looking good, but, you know, that could turn around and all of a sudden it isn't. But then, we yeah, again, the ones with the, 
you know, longing and shorting and sort of things like that. Yeah, we'll just have to be careful. All right, that's it from me. Stay safe. Be kind to one another. Pretty hard to be on that gain train at the moment. And I am, again, concerned that we might be going lower. Bitcoin's looking a little bit shaky. And I'll see you next time.